Detroit plus uh, <clears throat> Beverly D's uh, audience and Ron March's audience, and we have a very good time uh, kicking some ideas and understanding and everything is golden. Miss Beverly, are you there? Yes, I am, Ron March. There, Happy there, there uh, Wednesday go. to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, these last days remind me of China. I haven't seen the sun too much, you know what I mean? Right, <laughs> all <this> fog, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. All this fog makes me think I'm still over there. But uh, everything is good today. Um, I've been uh, uh, doing some some research on this validation that we're going to talk about tonight. But okay. I thought maybe we might want to kick around some ideas on uh on uh, the Republican Party and this uh, hellfire storm that's that's brewing. I think we all should be uh, looking at it. Um, it it's 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 scary the way that those Europeans act. Uh, it, to me, it's scary. Uh, they 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 I don't know. They got a one track mind. They got they go in one one direction. But I was told a long time ago, and I think I should let everybody hear this, there's a book, I meant to bring it tonight, it's called uh, uh, What's in a Name? And what the book talks about is in order for the government, and I'll just use that word loosely, in order for the government to do its dirt, they must put a face on their opponent. May it be a, a negative or a positive it doesn't matter. They have to put a face on it. You know, just like uh, religion. They had to create Jesus and put a face on it so that they could put it on the table and and massage all definitions and all clarifications of Jesus. And I'm, only, okay. I'm not talking about the religion. I'm just talking about the look and the word and the, and the, the, uh, con- the conditions of. For example, with black folks, uh, they they take um, us and paint us to be criminals. Now, all the way over in China, they were asking. They couldn't figure out what I was doing over there. I wasn't on a military mission. I wasn't on a government mission. I'm over there as a tourist, and I'm a, a free black man from America, free more from America. And it didn't click well with them. They didn't really know how to handle me. And, I, and when I say them, I'm talking uh, basically the Europeans. There were a lot of Europeans over there from uh, uh, from Europe, but most were mm-hmm. from uh, the, U- the U.K. And they take vacations all over uh, areas all over the world. And they know what areas to go in and what areas to come out of. And most of the areas that they go to, are westernized areas, you know, like most of us in the United States, we go to the Bahamas. We consider that a vacation. We've been uh, 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 on a vacation. Well, it's nothing more than uh, Disney World because it's so commercialized by Western uh, uh, commerce. You dig? Right. But they have to put a face on it. Now, right now, since... The, the the World War One type fighting. Now think back when you saw movies of World War One. That was the the dam the damnedest type of fighting, and that was historical. The way they fought in World War One was historical. Meaning, you move forward twenty miles, you fight, and you get pushed back fifteen miles. You move forward twenty miles and get pushed back five miles. You're winning the war because you're gaining turf and you're gaining gaining ground. They dug all those trenches and they fight to go to the trench. Get out in the trench. They fight. They get their butt kicked. They come out of the trenches and run to the trenches behind. But that was the way warfare was fought all the way back during the the Indian, um, so-called Indian cowboy crap they put on television. But when you start dealing with underdeveloped countries, and listen carefully, you can't fight that conventional type war with undeveloped countries. That's why they had to create uh, age, what do they 
all they wanted, Agent Orange. They created Agent Orange during the Vietnam War so they could spray the jungles and eat them up so they could see the enemy and go back with that uh, conventional type warfare, bombing and, and uh, blanket bombing and that type of thing. Well, today, they, they, they got a big problem. They don't know how to fight. They don't know how to fight. While they don't know how to fight these quote unquote terrorists. Now they have to label it. They got to have a name on it. So they label all insiders who object to America, all foreigners who object to America. They label them terrorists. Now they can give it definitions. They can write stories about it. They can create why they hate terrorists. That's why Trump's having so much trouble running his damn mouth because he's coming from the European perspective that terrorists is killing, destroying America. Well, terrorists, from, from their definition, is destroying the world because the world has been strangling innocent people for hundreds of years. The corporations are guilty of terrorism, if you ask me, by definition. But now that they, they they can't bring tanks up, they can't have planes that are faster than, they can't have guns that can shoot 10,000 rounds a second, that type of warfare is not what's being used today. So they're really lost. And if you listen to them, it's, it's disgraceful that we have these types of people governing this country that are nothing but stone idiots when they're in their comfortable zone where they can uh, dictate and, and, and yield to the faces that they already have studied, they're tough as hell. But when they go into an unknown area such as quote-unquote terrorists, they are lost. Their guns don't work. The bombs don't work. The tanks don't work. The drone missiles don't work. You, 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 you get an idea of what I'm trying to say, uh, Ben? Or do, am I making sense? Uh, well, I, now, who, <clears throat> who is the terrorist? Who, who well, is the, let's, let's, let's deal with that. That's a good question. That's a very good question. Who are the terrorists? All right, let's take one incident. Now, Keep in mind, Obama has been using the drone missiles to so-called strategically bomb places all over the Middle East ever since he's been in office. Mm -hmm. So if they get word that some leader is attending a soccer game, they will send the drone in, blow up the soccer game, and then put on the headlines, we've killed the number one terrorist of the world. But now they have created another 10,000 because they killed all the other people that were there. They never talk about the people that they killed in order to get that one ter so-called terrorist. And here lately they have been totally missing the terrorists the way they bombed that hospital over there in Syria which was a legal United Nations hospital, and they claimed, United States claimed, that their um, machine, uh, their, their, their computers uh, had a glitch in it, and, they could, and, their, and their bombing uh, uh, patterns were off, but they killed all of those patients. Now, they were after one guy that they thought was in that hospital, but they killed damn near everybody in the hospital to get it. Those are the terrorists. You think about it. What are you going to do? You're sitting at home minding your business. They drop a bomb and kill all your, your babies, your, sister, your your wife, your husbands, your daughters, your dogs, your cats. And they're on the news bragging that they finally got Ron March because he was invited over to Beverly D's. And we had good inside information that Ron was invited to dinner. And all we had to do was wait for the for the for the time period, and we 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 blanket bombed the whole neighborhood. 
Now, the headlines will clap. All those idiots will start clapping that we're, 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 we're winning with the fight on terror. Now, meanwhile, there's Beverly D crying. She's so hurt. She's crying. This cry, no, mad as a wet end. Beverly D, you are a terrorist because you are angry at United States or whoever did it. Didn't that be United States? Mm-hmm. So all of those people now they paint them with ugliness. That's what I'm talking about. You got to put a face on it. They yeah. know what I'm saying is totally true. But in order for it to work, they got to do certain things to make you not think the way you should be thinking, such as they're chopping off their heads. Okay, think about that for a minute. I think uh, they claim that three uh, heads were chopped off. All right, good. Now, how many people have they killed trying to kill one person? But all we can think about is, oh, they, they're, they're ruthless. Oh, you, can't, you can't work with them. They just chop off people's heads. We are not going to tolerate that. Okay. Come on now. Let's think about that. So every time they bomb, they create a terrorist. Those babies that grow up, how do you think they're going to feel when they can't find their mama and their daddy? And somebody told them, well, United States bombed them. How do you think Japan feels after dropping the atomic bomb on factories, Beverly? They didn't drop it on the war on, on war zones. They didn't drop it on the troops. They dropped it on the cities because they claimed that the cities was building too much machinery and too much war, war uh, machines. Now, but not only did they drop bombs, they dropped nuclear bombs, which meant it, all the survivors were injured. All the survivors that were in the area were injured. The genes, they're, they're still producing babies in Japan today that are deformed because of the genes that were knocked out of whack when they dropped the atomic bomb. I don't know if you know right. that. But that's that. Now, what are you going to call those people in Japan? They try to do all they can to make them forget it, but yet uh, this year on the 7th or whatever date it was, they had a, a not a parade, but they had a celebration, so they won't forget. You dig? The Jews do it all the time. They won't let you forget the Holocaust. They still hate Germans. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So a terrorist, you know, a terrorist is 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 a, a angry person. And when you, if you get a chance to talk with one, he's going to tell you why he's doing what he's doing. You know, they have painted the air the terrorists now that they want to go to heaven and see Allah. They hate the Western world. They teach that the Western world is no good. Well, we know the Western world ain't no good. They done did everything they could probably do to us. And they did the worst thing to us because they created, out of our race, they created the Negro. How much, how much more unhuman, inhuman can you be when you take a race of people and make them into something that they're not? We should be terrorists. You get, you get what I'm saying? I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> but, okay. you know, we also is under that European psychology, too. Yes. And, yes, and but so, that's all good. Mm-hmm. Go well, what do you do when uh, you have them uh, having terrorists in the states like the shooting that we just had uh, over there? Uh, where was that shooting at in California? That, San Bernardino. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and they and they want the first thing they said is. It was a woman and a man, and, and they're trying to get everybody against the Muslim. And now yes. they're finding out that it was three white men in military uniforms. Too many witnesses is coming out saying that they saw them doing the shooting. Yes, yes. Now, that, 
is perfect for you to analyze and is a good a good look on your part because I was going to ask you, did you understand how they presented this killing? It was not a terrorist killing. They thought it was a job-related killing, right? And then after, anytime you see him careen off the so-called criminal site, put the yellow ribbons up, the yellow uh, ropes and stuff up, they mm-hmm. can put anything in that house. They saw him carrying boxes in. They saw him carrying boxes out. So after a day or a day and a half, two days, now all of a sudden they found ammunition in the garage. Mm-hmm. You did? And, and they began to add stuff every day. Now the day of the killing, they knew who the people that was that got killed. They had the name, at least the guy. So they knew where he lived. They showed the house. Are you telling me they didn't go in there that first day? You telling me they didn't search that house to make sure there was no bombs or anything in it? And if it was bombs in it, why didn't they announce it the first day that the guy was got um, uh, um, uh, bullets and guns and hand grenades and, and bo- all that mess then? No, they had to wait two and three days later. So that's a suspect to me. And it all falls in line with gun control because they're pushing to, to, for people to turn in their guns. That's what they're trying to do, get the guns off, out, of, out of the way. So I don't take anything that they say face value. I evaluate it all. And I'm highly suspicious that they will plant evidence. You don't have one rogue cop. You're seeing it in Chicago. You don't have one rogue cop that gets up in the morning and says, I'm going out and kill me some black youth today. No, you don't. You got a whole department that condones killing black people. Because every time you, if you listen closely to most of these uh, incidents, once they start firing the, the police, I heard an incident the other day. I want to say, I know one of the listeners. Uh, uh, knows about this incident. He, in Chicago, they I think it was Chicago, they fired the guy and he damn near got on his knees begging not to fire him because he got to live like everybody else. Mm-hmm. So you telling me they're going to get up in the morning and go out there and kill somebody black, knowing the cameras is out there, knowing the dash cameras on, then they write a report and police that wasn't even at the scene are going to con- to, uh, agree with the report and sign on that they, they that's what happened. I think now there was, I, I don't remember the specific numbers, but it was something like eight to ten cops that killed the 17-year-old boy, 17 shots, but they had about 60 reports that said it was a good shooting. How the hell did they know? So I'm trying to say that it's a culture in the United States because I've always told you all, and I've read it to you from their own documents, that the United States was founded for the European white man. He wouldn't even let the white woman in his system without being a slave. It took her almost 150 years to get the opportunity to vote. White woman. Look at look it up. Don't don't look at me like I'm crazy. It took a long period for them to vote, and it's in the Constitution that it was set up for European white men. Now, that's their business if they did that, but they should have stayed where they were to- supposed to stay, which was Washington D.C. District of Columbia. Now they're all over America, everywhere. And they're fighting to maintain that livelihood. Go back to your original question. What is a terrorist? A terrorist is a victim of the United States. If you fight back, you're a terrorist. Now, they've got to be careful because they've lied so damn much. They've lied so much that it's difficult to call black people terrorists. You notice they haven't done that. 
but they got other names for us when we start shooting and killing or fighting back, if you will. No. So I look at it, it, it doesn't, Trump's language doesn't bother me, the Arabs don't bother me, I know what side my bread is, I know who I am. We all got to get our heads on right to know who you really are. But the enemy is not the, the, ter- the so-called terrorists. I can tell you that right now. That's not your enemy. And you can talk to some of the soldiers that came back from Vietnam, that came back from Korea, that came back from, from uh, Denver Storm, and they all kind of said the same thing. And that, and, and that is, why are you over there fighting them, black man? We don't have nothing against you. European knows that. That's why the army is not out there now, because they, they, they know that the army that they got does not work anymore because they can't go through a city and kill everything in sight because it's guerrilla warfare, and guerrilla warfare works. So if guerrilla warfare works and you don't know how to fight a guerrilla warfare, then you got to start calling them put a name on them, label them. And so you say anybody that's got a turban on, shoot them. Somebody made that statement. You need to get a gun. A college professor told him, get a gun. And when you see an heir and you think he's doing something wrong, he said handle it. Now what does that mean? And 9-11, if you remember, the day after or the day of, Days after 9-11, Dan Hillbilly in Texas shot a Hindu in a turban and took his body to the police station and told him, I got one. And the man owned a 7-Eleven right there in the city. Mm. Now, think about that. But that's part of that that psychological warfare that's going on. Well, you said it best a while ago when you said a European psychology. That's what that is. Yeah. And we got to look at it from that perspective. We can't get all hot and bothered over this idiot because he's speaking a true American, a, a Trump. Listen to them people. We've been living under that ever since we've been born on this earth. We've been living in terror. Police officer come up behind you driving, you get, you get nervous as hell. What does this bastard want? That type of feeling. And he gonna, if he gets out, he's going he gonna to make you look like an idiot. What are you doing, boy? You know anything you want. I ain't going to go into that. Y'all know what's happening. But due to the fact you've been brainwashed to love Christianity, you want to live with them. You want to be peaceful with them. How can you be peaceful with Trump? Because he gave you a job? And now he's a true, he's true Trump now. And all the people, did you hear that, uh, what's it? I don't even know who he is, but his name is Senator Cruz. Did you hear him today? No. Really? What did he say? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't um, look at that. that that's just yeah. a bunch of clouds. I, I don't look at that. That is not even yeah. real. Yep. Yeah. Well, he said that. All of the candidates uh, uh, dished Trump for making the statements. They did it in their own little way. Weak as hell, because they all said he wasn't right for him to do it. What statement uh, did Trump make? Oh, that he wants to keep all Muslims out of the United States. Kick them out oh, okay. and don't let none of them in. Okay. Yep. Just like they did in... Uh, in the 40s, uh, after, now listen to this, you're talking about terrorists. They dropped a bomb on Nagasaki and and Iwo Jima. After they dropped a bomb on it, it dawned on them that they had, I don't know, thousands of Japanese that was born and raised in the United States, and the president told them to put them all in a concentration camp. I know you know that. And they had to pay them reparations because the law says that you go to war and defeat the enemy, you owe them reparations. 
And see, they would tell you they had never been at war with black people. You know, I, why does it take some dummy like me to bring up some stuff that Al Sharpton with his dumb ass and all of them other ones ought to be talking about with all that microphone in their face every day? Why can't they tell the truth for once? We're going to get ready. Well, I mean, if, if you are if you are agent, you're not going to tell the truth. That's not your job. Yep, you're totally correct. But what bothers me with the agent is his followers. You're right on them. I I agree with everything you say, Reverend. Now, that's the one I want to get to, but I want to do it while Reverend's standing there. Just just round them up. You know what? Let me tell you a story about Joe Mo Kenyatta in Kenya back in the 50s. He was the president of Kenya. He knew that the European was what he is, no good. And the United Nations, through negotiations, they finally decided to liberate Africa. So they had a big fanfare and all kind of ceremonies. And in 1959, I think that was the year, they all the Europeans left. They decolonized Africa. They had the parades as the as the English had Kenya. Remember, I told you every European nation took a piece of it. England had Kenya, where Jomo was, and Jomo had a parade. A band said, get the hell out of here. I'm glad you're gone. They left on a Friday. They left. Monday morning, he rounded up three million Uncle Rivas at a time and killed them. England turned the ships around and come back, thought the war was on, and he stopped them at the shore. There ain't no war here. We just got rid of that shit that you created because we can't build a nation with them agents in here. <laughs> It's in the book. Uh, uh, I thought I had the name of the book on my tongue. Can't get it out. Uh, 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 burn is about fire. Burn, burn, something like that. It's in the book. He killed three. He, they liberated 20 million or half of 500 million, whatever. And when they left, Joe Mo killed three million of that Monday morning. Line them up. He said, I can't build my nation with y'all in here because y'all ain't going to do nothing but tell that white man and we're going to be right back in the same boat. So y'all got to go. We're going to have to cleanse this place big time in America. We can't do nothing with them, with them agents in here. And they know it. And, and the Europeans know it. So that's his only buffer, sending them agents out to, to calm us down. Have you ever heard that story before on Joe Mo Kenyatta? No, no. Joe Mo, Joe Mo Kenyatta was the president. I just told you about. Oh it. no, oh, what you, no, I hadn't heard that. When was that? That was in uh, nineteen fifty, late fifty. Oh, in the fifties. Okay. Yep. When they liberated Kenya. Okay. They called him the Bernie. They called Joe Mo the Bernie Bush. I think that's what it was called. The book. I can't remember. But somebody out there would know about it. Yes, it was something else. Okay? So, we got to be vigilant on our position to to know who we are. And we need to have our minds synchronized to the fact, and I, I did a pretty good show yesterday, Bev, I don't know if you heard it, that we Not are here, related. Yeah. Okay, you got to listen to it. We are related to the omics way back. Our history goes back to dynasties over 40, 20,000 years before Jesus Christ, before Christ. So that tells me that we don't need someone to come in our land and tell us what to do and come in here and set up laws and rules and then tell us we got to abide by them, and we gave them a contract to come in here. But you know, but what do you, saw, what do you go ahead? Well, what do you do when you have people that have came in, invaded your land, and uh, they are dismantling the constitution? They don't pay that any attention. Well, in any other contract. All right. 
Once you learn the contract, you don't know the contract. The reason that they set up a new contract because they could not live under the old contract. reason they never let you teach you of the old contract is because they know they can't do this dirt under the old contract. Now, you must be diligent enough to take all of your crimes, and I'm gonna, i got to say it two ways. You're going to end up in world court with your crime, with your charges. That's what's going to happen. Now, how do you do that? You create your own court. Once you become private, you create your own court. And there's a way of doing it. I've talked about it. It's called you use the administrative remedy to get right. them in default. Now you go before their court and sue for violation of administrative remedy. You don't have to bring up the charges. You're going to bring up that they are default, which means they're totally guilty. You don't got to go back through all the charges. They know what the charges are. But you've got to be smart enough to know how to use the administrative remedy to get a remedy. You're not, we're not going to be able to run them off the planet unless they desire to leave. So we can almost throw that, that out of our mind. We're not going to be able to get guns and and planes and bombs and all that crap to fight them. We're not going to win. That's out. I want everybody to know that. I ain't never even talked about nothing like that. We need to use our heads and use paper. And, and and ruin them the way they ruined us. The, the number one enemy to the European is exposure. None of them want to be exposed. That's why they're so nervous with Trump, because Trump is exposing the fact that he is a stone racist, and he's got 30% of the Americans who support him, or better yet, 30% of the Republicans who support him on his side. That's ugly. Think about that. England said today, I, don't, I know you didn't hear it because you said you don't listen to it. England sent a notice to the United States today and said Trump is not allowed in the UK. <laughs> think about that. Saudi Arabia sent out a notice today and said all of Trump's, Trump's products is going in the dumpster. Today. <laughs> now, wow. He act like, now, you can say that ain't a big deal. I call that a huge, huge deal. But we can't go to sleep on it. We can't say, oh, we got him. No, we ain't. Because all of them 30% that support him and 100% of the Democrats that support the same crap, but they're just not on front street. We got to be able to see that. But no, these Negroes, are standing up with the Democrats. I heard them a day when I come to the studio today. They're on mm -hmm. W1200 uh, talking about okay. Trump is destroying America. What the hell is he talking about? A black mm -hmm. guy sitting in for Tokyo Rose. You know what I'm talking about. All He's right, in there right. <laughs> representing her. <laughs> He's talking about, and he had to, there's an article in the free press today on the front page that's calling Trump a racist dog and he's destroying the fabrics of democracy and blah, 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 blah. Every time they steal an election, they put oh, Kwame in jail for a crime that, 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 that he never should have went to jail for. Not only is that terrorism to Kwame, they destroy the fabrics of, 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 of democracy. And this black, he's going to stand up like he got something to say about Trump. You see what I'm saying? This is the idiotic crap that we have to go through with these old ignorant. A lot of them are ignorant. They don't really know what the hell they're talking about. And they've been trained to say certain things. And they think it's politic, politically correct to try to get along with them. So they'll say any damn thing to be a buddy. When I was on my trip, there was a 
UK, old Peckwood, old Peck. He was honest. I got to give him credit. Mm-hmm. On Thanksgiving, he gave a, he gave a little a little speech and said that because he was directing it at me, but he said that we came to your country as, as pilgrims, come in with peace signs. Y'all fed us, taught us how to live, showed us how to grow crops, and after we got our stomachs full, we took y'all out in the alley and shot every one of them and took the shit, mm-hmm. took, the, took the stuff from them. I had to laugh. <laughs> did he name? Did, did he say the Indians? Na, yeah, Native Americans. Yep, he okay. said Native Americans. Yep, he said Native Americans. And my wife was mad at me because I didn't tell him that over us. He did that too. <laughs> I, I was laughing, and then a Scottish guy got up and said, "How in the hell is it?" Possible for y'all to celebrate Thanksgiving. Why are y'all celebrate? I couldn't say nothing mm-hmm. to that. You know what I mean? Right. Why do we celebrate Christmas? Why do we celebrate Christmas? We got to be the dumbest people on earth. Right. We, <laughs> we celebrate, not take over. <laughs> yes. And every, man, I'm telling you, it, 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 it's, it, you want to laugh, but you got to laugh to keep from crying. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I right. asked the lady when I got back, uh, was at Lexus, and she was trying to question me about the religion. When I said that Buddhism was not a religion, she questioned me and talked about Christ. I asked, I said, look, I don't really want to talk to you, but I'm going to ask you one question. Now, we'll go forward with your answer. And that, my question is, why are we the only people on earth that worships a deity that don't look like us. Oh, she looked at me. She looked like a hound dog, like a Cheshire cat. And I said, well, the conversation's over. Ain't much more we can talk about. And that, it hurt her. It really did. But I couldn't, I couldn't say nothing else. I said, we're the only ones that do that. So, we can be forgiven because we don't know any better. But once you know better, now you're an idiot. And she'll say things like, "Well, that you know that don't really matter because I know who I am." No, you don't. How do you know who you are? You were born in this madness like everybody else. Now you stand here telling me you know who you are. No, you don't. As none of us really know who we are. That's why we need to study. Grasp history and get in it. Nobody can tell you who your nation, who what nationality you are. You have the right to choose whatever you want to be. If I go back to Red China and live, I'll become a Chinese. I learn how to speak that stuff. Especially if I go up in the hills where the black ones are, up in the mountains where the black ones are. How do you right. become different? Well, anyway. <laughs> you, 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 do you get it? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, let's you want to get in a little study for the day? <laughs> I think about that. <laughs> let's get it. Let's get into it. Now okay. we're talk, We're talking about debt, and we're talking about validation. If you go into the uh, the books to study about debt and validation, you're going to find that they don't really have a clear definition of that yet. They don't really give a good definition of a debt or validation. In the app, here's what it says. Let me bring it up in good fashion. In the absence of in the absence of a statutory definition, courts give terms they ordinarily mean. Courts give terms their ordinary meanings. And they got court cases, which when you ask for that validation, the courts kind of lean on the ordinary definition because there's no law that specifically states. 
plain meaning can be determined by using a dictionary. So if you look up validation, you can find it. The Supreme Court noted we have stated time and time again that courts must presume that a legislature says in a statute what it means, and it means in the statute what it says there. So you look it up. So you look up the definition of of uh, validation. Yep. And they give you, I'm looking at several laws, a, a, a case law, and then it says, when the words of a statute are unambiguous, then this first canon is also the last. And that canon is judicial inquiry is complete. So that means when you take a court case, you can use a court case to determine what validation is. The legislation's purpose is expressed by the ordinary meaning of the word used. So that's a lot of gobbledygook, but it, to me, I understand what they're saying. You need to find case law of validation. So what you would do, you would Google case law validation or validation case law. Let the computer do the work, bring up cases upon cases that determines what validation is. Then you quote that case in your documents. Or, like some some brothers said, you don't want to use a court case by name, and that's getting real, that's getting real picky you to me. But you can always refer to the court has stated time and time again exactly what it says. The word from the dictionary means what the dictionary says, and the dictionary means what the word says. So validation. This is key. I mean, the key is to ask for verification of status of alleged as holder in due course of it, claims based on an instrument, note, or contract. So you want them to validate it. The best validation you can have would be an instrument, a note, or a contract. That is very important. When they don't provide it, give the court mandatory judicial judicial notice of the fact with copies of your request. In other words, you're going to ask them to give you validation. When they don't give it to you, then you want to make sure you let the courts know that they, you asked for it and you're going to show the court that you asked them to validate it and they never validated it. Now, this is very important when it comes to debt because if you want to get technical, and I want to say this to get your attention because I know somebody going to be emailing me wanting to know, that when it comes to United States of America and it comes to debt, to so-called debt, debt does not exist in America. Debt does not exist. And the reason it doesn't exist because the opponent or the corporation, whoever you're doing business with, cannot validate that you have debt. It's totally impossible. Are you with me, Beth? So are you saying that? <laughs> Be going back to Sears and Robots. So you saying a person yes. have debt with Sears and Robots? You can't validate that. They can't no. validate that. No, they cannot. No, they cannot. And, and are, why? Why can't they validate it? All right. I'm hearing they somebody can't validate saying, it. Right. I know. I know. They can't validate it because they don't have an instrument a note or a contract that says 
is validated or they own it or you bought it from them. They can't prove it. Oh, now, so they got to prove that they own it. Yes. They got to prove that they are the holder in due course. The, 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 you got a creditor and you got a debtor. They make you a debtor because you don't know who you are. So let's start with that. All citizens, according to uh, 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 HDR 192 or the New Deal, all citizens of the United States are debtors. Now, we can argue, we can talk about that at a, a later time. But as far as the, as the government is concerned, every citizen is a debtor. Now, in order for you to be a debtor, you have to have debt. And if you have, if you got debt, or you think you got debt, you, you need to have the debt validated from Sears and Roebuck, and they can't validate it, so you don't have debt, so you're not a debtor. Now, when you say they need to validate it, they need to, uh, again, what are you saying? They need to give you something that say that they own that washing machine and dryer you bought? Yes, yes, yes. and they sold it to you. And but you isn't agree that with that bill of sale that you get when you buy that, that bill of sale that say how much it costs and how much you paid and how much you owe? No, that's an invoice. Okay. That's not, that doesn't show they own it because Sears and Roebuck don't own it. Whoever whoever made it would be the ones that owned it the way you're talking. They didn't manufacture it. Sears and Roebuck is selling it. They are a retailer. They're not the manufacturers, and you don't buy it from the manufacturer. And, and the key to your answer is Sears can't talk. That's a disadvantage for Sears. Would you agree? Or can you agree to that? Yeah, because so it's a corporation. Yes, ma'am. They, not only can they not talk, they can't sign the document. So where's the contract? The United States is founded on contracts. That's the major problem that black folks have. Better yet, that's the problem that Americans have. They don't realize that everything is done, must be done by contract. Now, this invoice is not a contract because nope. I signed it, the salesperson signed it, but Sears didn't sign it. No. You showed me no. an invoice that the salesperson signed. He ain't, what the hell he signed for? <laughs> Why is he signing? Mm -hmm. you, and you're not going to sign the invoice. You're going to sign what they call the agreement to pay. In the Isn't agreement that a contract? Is have, well, maybe we should start from scratch. Let's, let's start all over again. Give me your definition of a contract. Well, if you I want know to take that time out. You may want to take time out and look it up, and, I, and that's. A, I'm just suggesting that you might want to do that. Now, if you well, don't want to I, do maybe, it, I, I think I remember from when I was working. Uh, all state, right, all isn't right. it? Isn't it when you have two people uh, agree the meetings of the mind and two signatures and a time, and a date? That's part of it. What else? Part that's not a that's not that's not a contract yet. Okay. What's going to make it a contract? We can agree. All right, so you and I agree. And, and we both um, got to have the signatures. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. That's what that's solidifies what a contract. Right. Signature. That's why I yes. say the only contract that that's really not the only, but a true contract is a lease. Because a lease on anything, whoever whoever owns the, the, the vehicle or the apartment building, they're going to sign because they own it, and you're only leasing it, and they want it back. So, so people that have leased cars, 
they can't yep. uh, write that debt off. Do 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 four and sign that lease. Yes, the, uh, the dealer the dealer signs that lease on the on the on the uh, yeah the lease car yes there are two signatures on that lease when you lease it somebody in that dealership gonna sign it they gotta sign it because they want the car back and they're gonna okay. give you instructions on how to bring it back so many mileage no dips no chips good tires. Good rotation. They're gonna give you a little contract to tell you how to bring that sucker back. Cause if they don't give you a contract, you can keep it. There's got to be a contract. It's got to be sold. And what you really left out, there's got to be complete considerations at both ends. There's got to be. In other words. You can't tell me how much I should pay for an automobile, for example. You know what I mean? Or better yet, here's something real silly. I've been locked up in prison, and and they wouldn't let me smoke for two years. For example, I'll give you an example. So the day I get out, you come to pick me up. I tell you I want a cigarette, and you say, "Well, I got two. I'll sell you one." And I say, how much? And you say, $20. Here's 20 Give me a cigarette. Now, everybody says, that man's stupid. He paid $20 for a cigarette. He could have got a, a carton for $20. He may have. But his desire at that moment, he considered the $20 to be equal to the cigarette. Well, how are you going to tell him no? You don't wait 20 years to get to that point. You got to take him to the store to buy it. So, the consideration was even. It was even Stephen in that transaction. He can't go to court and say, you tricked me because you sold me a $5 cigarette, I mean a five cent cigarette for $20. No, I didn't. You paid $20 for the cigarette. You didn't ask me to take it to the store, buy your own. So there had to be a meeting of the mind. There was a meeting of the minds in that transaction. So that makes, that makes a, a, a good contract. And I'm bringing that up because lawyers would get in court and argue that meeting of the minds thing, and the judge would go along with them because they could out-argue you. See, to be, to be correct in court is not the, is not the correct person in court is not necessarily the winner. He who stands last is the winner. So a lawyer learns how to lie and cheat because he gets in an argument and he's trying to uh, 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 present his case. He'll say and create anything to let the courts know he know what he's talking about and he don't know a damn thing, but I can't re- rebut it because I wasn't prepared to argue with him. This is life now. Don't y'all get upset about this, but this is what you're going to run into. But if you read your maxim, maximums of commerce, there's ten of them, ten maxims of commerce. One of them states clearly, he who last stands last wins. That's why I give you all this history behind what I'm telling you so you can prepare yourself and know what the hell you're doing when you go up against these people. Because they, they are prepared. They've been to school. They've been trained and retrained how to argue. That's why everybody calls a lawyer a lying dog, because he's not saying anything. If he can prove it, and if you can't just disprove it, he's going to win. Because the judge is going to look at you like an idiot and say, well, Mr. Mark, if you got anything to say about what this man said, he's a liar. Where, when, how did he lie? Well I, well, I don't, I don't know. He said that I don't know. Well, Mr. Marks, look, I got things to do. You got things to do. If you can't tell me where he lied, what he said wrong, and show me that you know what you're talking about, I got to give the case to him. Next case, as I words. So you got to be prepared. So you got to keep in mind what a true contract is. 
and you've got to be prepared to defend it. And you, Beverly, have never had, I don't know about elites or being married, but when it comes to merchandise, you have never had a contract. Never. And you paid for everything that you bought, but you never had a contract. So that's how so that's how you can get your debt taken care of because you never no. had a contract. No. That's just an yeah. argument that you can win with when you start for validation. You got to know that. When you okay. when they send you a presentment, you gotta know that it's it's a void presentment when they send it to you. I gotta, okay. I gotta let me find this one here. There when they send you all right, listen to this. Uh all of these different types of debts, we got all kinds. Begin with filling out a promissory note, parentheses, a contract. They're going to make a contract with you. You're going to fill it out. Application is a contract. You, they tell you you got to sign it. Why do you have to sign the application? They got your ID. They know who you are, but they want you to sign it because that application technically, is a promissory note. Because they can, you fill out an application, they're going to send it out to see if somebody will lend you the money. They're going to get a notice back or phone call, yes, we'll take this one. We'll give them uh, 40000 on that vehicle. You don't even know it. Now when you come in, that salesman is going to take you for a joyride all over the place, give you all kinds of whistles and bobs and dip, got bob and blue, blah, blah, all that stuff. Then you're going to sit down and start going through the paperwork. How much can you pay, blah, all of that kind of stuff. Now he's going to draw up a agreement. You've already been approved. You don't know it. You think this guy is going to do something. He knows, he, he knows you already been approved. That's why a lot of times they don't want you to get out of the building because they know they got some money. All they got to do is trick you and make you sign. They want you to get that signature. Because the signature creates the money. Nothing else. There is no money. Nothing can start unless you sign your name. All right. When this is uh, submitted to the bank or to the lending institution, and after an approval process, they call around and find out what you're worth. You receive that money by signing this contract. Once you sign the contract, everything goes into, into motion. And the bank tells you quite dishonestly, or the dealership tells you, just honestly, that you owe them a debt for the amount of the money. So the dealer is going to tell you, you got to pay this, and your payment's going to be this, and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. All of that is a lie. But they also charge you interest for this convenient service. That means that by the end of the 30 years or 30, 60 months, you'll probably have paid about double, if not triple, what the actual loan was about and what you were signing the original contract for. You know, I guess you know that. You signed for mm-hmm. 22000 and by the time you get through 60 months, you know, at least paid at least forty five or 60000 Yeah. Okay. All right. But there is uh, one thing that the banks is not telling you, one very, very uh, big piece of the puzzle. According to Federal Reserve banks or lending institutions, and you can call them all banks, that's what they are, lending institutions, and print it in their banking rule books, money is created when a person signs a contract with you. 
That's the only time. And see, this is why they want those immigrants to come in. Trump with his dumb self. You know what? Let's stop for a minute. Let me tell you all something. Obama signed an executive order, and I believe it was executive order 13603. Maybe some of your people know about it. That executive order gives him the power to declare himself dictator and stay in office until he feels that the country is back to normal. <laughs> oh, wow. Why you keep doing that? <laughs> I should have brought that. that so you mean, you mean to tell me we going to have to have four more years of Obama? Yes. Maybe eight you know, more have, years of Obama. Maybe eight. Yes, because see, I always suspected, now this is Ron Marsh now, that's all it is. I ain't got nothing to back this up. But I've always suspected that you can't be as dumb as Trump is and say all that trash without having a motive or a ulterior motive. He can never be president because he can't make any deals abroad. Nobody will fund him or support him because they can't make any money was a big in, in the White House. Mm-hmm. And the army's not going to fight for him because the soldiers are mad. And that's why the United States is using uh, uh, mercenaries. They, they use mercenaries now because the soldiers mm-hmm. are so upset and don't join. So, so Trump could never institute anything because Mexico would attack America with his crazy crap. He did so I think he's out there so that he can create enough conflict and confusion that Obama said in order to maintain peace and stability in the name of democracy, I'm staying in office. Mm-hmm. I'm putting the country yeah. under martial law so anybody that comes up here and knock on this door is going to get shot. I'm in here, don't even come in there. And the uh-huh. world will be happy. The world will be joyful because they already said Trump's an idiot and Trump will live happily ever after because I think he's working with the Democrats anyway. That's just what I think. It's a good scenario. So y'all might well get yeah, out. You're not far off. You, you're on it because a lot of people are saying that Trump is, is the joker. Yes. 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 All right, let's keep going. Here we Doing some time. Last year, I remember uh, campaign people. Now, they're talking about foreclosures. And this lady was saying, Show me the note. And it went over quite well in Ohio until the lawyers and the corporation got together and set up some more schemes and got with the court so that the judges said certain things that they didn't, they, they, that they didn't have to show the promissory note. They had a big case right here in Michigan, and they and they mm-hmm. had the black, they only got one blackie, and the blackie ruled that uh, MERS don't have to show the, the uh, what the, uh, as a MARDG, they don't have to show the promissory note, and they can foreclose on property, which was all illegal, but they, they did it. Okay? So, uh, I did not understand the significance of the simple, of this simple but effective protective statement. But now I do. Show me the note. It's quite a valid request. That's by law. You have a right to see the contract. Okay? Because if I give you an IOU and somebody told me you sold that IOU to Fred Johnson, I don't even know who Fred Johnson is, you already got the money. You ready to go to Hawaii on vacation? But you want me to keep paying, and you're gonna pay off. Uh, you got money from him, and you're gonna send me money from me. So if I suspect that, I got a right to say, "Well, look, I'll keep paying you, but I want to see that you got my my note." So let's meet. I don't have to take it with me. I just want to meet you at the bank and bring the note and let me see it, and then we'll continue. That's fair enough. No, 
The law says you can't do it, and then now we got to fight. So that show me the notes started going out. Show me the notes are quite out of request. It simply means that you are requesting the original contract that was signed by yourself at the closing with the bank, and the money was created and given to you to buy your house, car, refrigerator, whatever you bought. It's bold, bold letters. The bank cannot ever produce the note. The bank don't have the note. They must, within 90 days after you sign, they must process the note. If they don't, they have to keep it for the entire period of payments. And that means they have to carry it as an asset. That would mean, for example, Ben, if you had, you were selling cars out of the front, your front yard, you had three cars out there. And you were selling the cars, and then you, when you get the, the note signed, you sell the note. So now when you file your taxes, you had three cars out there. When you file taxes, you're only going to file on two cars because the other one ain't out there no more. Or the next one, you're going to sell it, blah, blah, blah. So if you can sell them all out before uh, your uh, the tax date, you don't have to pay any taxes because you don't have any cars, but you got all the money because you got the promissory notes. But you got to sell the promissory notes so you can make money on the back end so now the cars are gone and the note's gone. That's how it works. So when Ron comes back and says, Ben, this car ain't running right, well, you paid for it. You can, I said, well, let me see the contract. Let's see what the contract says. She, I, she, you ain't going to be able to produce it because you ain't got it. Now, you might have a carbon copy. And I said, well, wait a minute. This is a carbon copy. You're going to change the original. I want to see the original copy with the ink signature. And I want to see where you deposit it in the bank. You had to cash it. You had to put it up. So that it should be stamped just like a check. Boom. Should be a stamp on that baby. She can't produce it. Because she sold it to somebody else. They do all contracts like that. Not, not one, all of them. Therefore, the bank that says here, uh, the bank sells a note to the Federal Reserve the minute it is signed. And the feds give the bank the amount that it, it then needs of the loan. That's that paper money. Okay? Well, I, I should Monopoly money. Not, not real, just monopoly. Notes. Therefore, the bank is at a balance of zero dollars at the point of inception and payments for the loan. Remember, this is how money is created, according to Federal Reserve. It, it, only can be, it only can be made through your signature. And they're saying the Federal Reserve gets it. Well, the Federal Reserve sells it in the open market, especially mortgages, because they call them mortgage-backed securities. They'll take X number of securities worth $80 million and sell that $80 million to China, Budapest, or somebody like that. And they get real money back, and China will get the payments, which is less than real money. That's, you know, a dollar ain't worth up to about 20 cents on the, out there on the open market. So they got to give them a lot of 20 cents in order for China to 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 benefit from lending us or giving us money when they pay for them daggum uh, uh, mortgage-backed uh, securities. Are you following so, me? Yeah, so the, the reason to validate uh, your debt is so that is so you could go into court. Yes. But there, there are validation and, letters. Right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. no. Okay. Uh, okay. There are certain validation letters. I got, I got a lot of them that will 
you can tell the presenter, so they sell them around. You may get the first note from uh, Joe Joe's LLC, who's representing, directly representing Sears and Roebuck. He's going to be a little more polished than others. Well, if you refuse to pay him, he's going to put that note back into the pool, and some another firm is going to buy it. The notes which were changed from A, B, C, and D. I'm just giving you some notes. D, they know you ain't going to pay. So some housewife might get it and buy, buy take $100, and she might be able to buy $20,000 worth of debt. But they're all sorry debts that ain't going to pay anyway. But she only paid $100 for it. So all she needs is stamps and a letter. Now, if they send that letter to you, Beth, and tell you that you owe, and you know you owe Sears $300, and you've been through a lot of mess, and you ain't paid them yet. So now, I'm a, a D debt collector in that in that last bucket. So all my letters say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll twitch in your name, address, and all of that. And then I'll say in, in my letter, if you send me your $300, but if you send me $50, I will make that money go away. Nine times out of ten, you might send me $50. You don't know the difference. Especially if I got letterhead on my on my document, you don't really know who I am. And I call myself Freedom Now Credit Repair Company. I just made that up. And you say, damn, that might help me out because they've been killing me on this other stuff. So you send them $50, they in turn will send a notice to the credit bureau, which is not a good credit bureau anyway, because you didn't ask them to track your, your business. They did that on their own, so they're violating the law getting in your personal affairs. I'm talking about, uh, you know who they are. I can't even call them all. The third party debt collector. No, no, no. Equ- who are you talking about? Equifax, Sachs. Oh, you're talking about them. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, those are the ones that give you trouble. Then you don't pay. Sears and Roebuck sends a letter to them and tell them you didn't pay. Or you in detail. They put it on your report. You go next door from Sears to Montgomery Warren, try to buy a skillet, and they say your credit's bad. Well, you didn't pay Sears. Who told the credit bureau to do that? You see what I'm saying? Oh, that's a game. It's a game. Because Sears, so when, when that first person came after you, he broke the law for coming after you because he don't have a real contract to even deal with you. So why is he in your business? And you're going to tell him, if I get a bad report on my credit bureau, I'm going to hold you responsible for that, and I'm going to put a lien on your butt if I call the credit bureau in 30 days and it's on there that I didn't pay because I know it's paid for because I paid for it when I signed my name. Now, it's not now this simple. doesn't count. This doesn't count with leases, right? No, you can't do that with a lease because you got a real contract with a lease. If you go to court, the leasee is going to show up. The leasee is going to go downtown and get a uh uh a summons and complaint against you. Okay. That's that's the difference. When Sears go downtown, you're going to have some crook standing down there talking about they're representing Sears. But then if you represent Sears, show me that Sears told you that you can do what you're doing. Show it to me. It's called the DOA, Delegation of Authority. What authority do you have even bringing me down in the court? I'm missing a whole day of work, and I get paid. Six hundred dollars a day, so I'm gonna sue you for that six hundred. I got a ticket while I come down, and that's another fifty dollars in inconvenience, all that kind of stuff. I'm getting, I'm getting in your butt for bringing me down here, cause you don't have a right to do it, cause you don't have nothing. Sears don't even have a contract, so I know you ain't got nothing. You follow me, Ben? Got you. I got you. All right, we got it. We got it. Uh, somebody called it in here. Let's see if I'm, if, if, if they catch it on. Area code 912, uh, last four, 
will be 1695. Do you have a question or comment? Yes, call 912, area code. 1695. Do you have a question or comment? Hello? Yep. You got a Hello? question, young man? Yes, I do. I think it was next to that you were saying, if you can hear me, I don't know if it's my phone back and kind of loopy right now. But my question is, when you initially went into Tiroba and you took the application or you kind of so-called promise. Are you on? Are you on the speaker? No. Are you, on, you on the telephone or you on the speaker? No, I'm on the telephone. I All right, I can't hear you too well. Speak, speak a little louder and slower. Go ahead. Say it again. Okay. Is this, is this better? I said what you were saying about going into the city. Okay. Initially, you signed the uh, application of the promise that you're going to buy uh, a plastic food guy. What happens when they say, okay, you're denied? Yes, you can be denied. Uh, no, it ain't, that ain't going to work. Bev, can you hear it? No, we couldn't hear it. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, we laid it to us, Ron. We can't hear him. I, I hear it, but I can't make out what he's saying. And he, he hung up. He said he'll call back and try to get a better connection. That would be better. All right, he's gone. Do you have any callers? Uh, yes. No. If you if you have any questions, y'all can call 347-215-8041. That's 347-215-8041. Yep. All right. And if you want to call in my show, 718-506-1864, you can call in my show, 718-506-1865. He was so, trying to ask the so Yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. What was he trying to say? He was trying to ask me about uh, pay. Uh, if he makes a purchase, I, I, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. Let, let it go. Hopefully you'll call back. Yep. So the, 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 the validation is your ammunition to take to court. Yes. To say yes. that uh, you don't owe the debt or you Correct. don't have to pay the debt. Correct. Correct. But now, you got to be careful because the judges are very slick. Mm-hmm. See, uh, when, I, when I say slick, they, they are working with, they used to be attorneys, and they're working with the, the uh, debt collectors. So the debt collector mm-hmm. is, a judge, is just like a judge, too. So the first thing you want to do is protect yourself. Now, how would you do that? First of all, you're going to say, when you write and ask for validation, the first thing you should say is, I want to pay you every dollar you're asking for. However, I have to have conditions. Now, the conditions are you got to validate the debt. So when you get to court, you're going to tell the judge, I don't even know. No, and, and, and I'm going to come back to this. I, I don't even know why I'm, why I'm down here. Your job, Your Honor, if there is a conflict or an ad- adverse uh, complaint among us, we should come to court to get a hearing for you to rule who's right or who's wrong. But since I have agreed to pay him, there is no conflict. I don't have a conflict with this guy. That is a key argument that you must start with so your paperwork's got to reflect that you really want to pay. I'm going to pay you not what I owe you. I'm going to give you a million-dollar bonus. That's how much I love you. If you validate the debt. He can't, how can he have an argument? Well, the judge got to look at 
look at him like I told you earlier, the last one standing. The judge got to look at him and say, well, Lord, here's what you got to say. You follow me? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, because then now the judge can't make you pay because when he came after you, he wanted you to get, he came with a one-sided offer to pay him, which you don't owe him. And you're telling him, yeah, I'm going to pay you. I'll pay. I'll give you what you want. Because I'm tired of looking at your dumb butt. I got conditions. The number one condition is I got to have validation. I got to have the contract back. Now there's no need for the judge to rule yes or no because there's no argument. Do you follow me? But, the, okay, but. If the courts are saying that they don't have to produce the promissory note, that's the contract, isn't it? Yeah, but the note, yeah, yes, that's the contract. But notice, you got you created the argument because you said, "Show me the, show me the note." And the and the guy, and the judge, know the the guy don't have it, so he's going to file on you because the judge knows. And listen to this carefully. The judge knows what a secured interest in a transaction is. A security interest. Write that down, Bev, and maybe you'll get a chance to look up. All right. Security interest. interest. Yes. And while you're doing that, I got a caller. I got a caller. All right. Area code 336. Two two six eight. You got a comment? Yes, peace, 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 brother, peace. Go ahead. Yeah, brother, it, it, it's a pleasure uh, to to finally get through. I've been listening to your shows. I'm calling here from out of uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina. All right, appreciate your call, sir. Welcome aboard. Yes, sir. Um. Okay. I, I, I listened to your show when you said don't 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 call you or bother you until you until you get your authentication. <laughs> okay. Yes I said. Yes I said yes I said that. Yes, and I would like to say uh uh peace to uh to the goddess, sister sister Beverly. Peace to you. All right, my name I'm brother Yusuf. I am a Yusuf L myself, uh brother Ron. All right. Are you down yes, there with uh, uh, Jonah? Are you in that area with Jonah Bay? Well, they, they, they're in Atlanta. They're five hours away. Oh, oh, okay. That's right. That's right. You said Carolina. Okay. Yes. Go ahead with your question, Brother Houston. All right. I wanted to try to get in contact with you because I just received my authentication back. Um, from where? From, 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 from the Secretary of State, from John Kerry. All right. All right. All right. Now, and it, what's your it, question? It, um, after doing that, I, I really wanted to know some of the other steps I know about doing the affidavit of ownership. Uh, that was one of them. What would be some of the next steps? But if you could also um, just kind of touch on the, um, oh, my God, which one was it? This kind of happened to be getting through right now. Um, the injunction? Injunction? Yes, the, the injunction. The right yes. to travel. Want, oh, the well, right I, to I, travel. I, no, not the right to travel. The injunction or the uh, 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 the trust and the uh, uh, EIN 98, the foreign trust and the 98. Okay. I, I have the trust. That that came through two weeks ago. I have the 98 number. Oh, all right. Now, so you, so you got it back. Now, what you want to do now is get that uh, uh, affidavit of ownership uh, notarized, that's number one. And then I would go downtown and what did you name, what have you named your, uh, what's your name, your uh, uh, trust. trust? What's the name? Yeah. Is it your name, uh, Yusuf? No, it's, it's under Per, per M. Peru. Okay. Okay. The, the ancient would, name of coming forth by day and by night. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. I would go down and get my uh, 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 D-1 
DBA, doing business as. So you take your, your Christian name, yep, do your Christian name, because they're only going to accept that, and you're going to do business as Yusuf so that you can use Yusuf in your, to be a trustee in your trust, and you can uh, 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 get ID and everything for Yusuf, and you'll, and you'll have an EIN number that you can use that you create and use it to run the trust. So you're talking about my, my national name. Well, y'all, 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 no, he said, I'm sorry, sir. I want Yusuf is not your Christian name. I'm presuming that. Is that correct? It's 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 Yusuf Suggs, but my national name is Suggs L. All right. What were you born? What was your Christian name? Yusuf Suggs. Did your mama name you that? That was no. That's what's on the birth certificate because I had my name changed back in 2002. So when I went back and got my birth certificate, everything had already been switched over. All right. Well, I can only assume that your mail, how does your mail come to the house? What name is on you, it when it comes to you? Yousef Suggs, S-U-G-G-S. All right. All right. All right. Well, you need to take that Yousef Sugg and go get a DBA and change it to whatever you want it to be. You're going to do business as and you done got me confused, but you're going to do business as, because you want to get out of all caps. That use of sub that you're talking about is in all caps. If it comes through the mail, it's got to be in all that's caps. Correct. So that's correct. Yes. So that's a slave name. That, that would be the Christian name that I was asking for. So right. now you want to get that out of there. Now you want to get change it to business Hello? as whatever you call, call yourself now. What do you call yourself okay. now? In an, uh, Yusuf Suggs L, E-L. All right. All right. And those are two different names. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. You want to go downtown and get it. And you got to go downtown because they got you down there as Yusuf, whatever your mama gave you. Yusuf Suggs, uh-huh. what you said. Yeah. And then you're going to say, okay, I'm going to, you ain't got to tell them about 98. Don't bring up none of that. You just tell them that you're going to open up a business and you're going to call the business Yusuf Sub L and get that okay. paperwork. Now you're going to get, you can take that Yusuf Sub L and put it in your instruments, in your trust, that you're going to be a trustee in there as Yusuf Sub L. So now you're going to do business from the trust uh, uh, instruments in the name of Yusuf, Yusuf Sub L, and you want it to be opened up or give it, give you credit card or debit card in Yusuf Sub L. You're going to need to get, you, you, you get like, you, I'm getting a little ahead of myself because I got some new information the other day, and I, I'm trying to figure out how to, to put it online. But when you, any any trust that you have, how did you file for it? That's right. You got a 98 number. Is that right? That's correct. So, so you're private. You're private. Yeah. Now, if you're going to do business, you got to know. So I've, I've been told, and you're getting ahead of me, because Jonah and the other Yusuf are the, are the ministers of that trust. I don't have okay. I got an irrevocable trust. And, and I'm going to work it when I get my 98 and put that irrevocable trust into the new trust. So I, I that, that's an express I trust? Ask, yes. 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 But I got all the other stuff. I got my DBA and I got my all the other, you know, my birth certificate and all of that. But I'm I'm trying to do my injunction before I deal with the trust. So I, let me backstroke out of that. But you gotta go I know you gotta go down and get that Use of sub change to use of sub L. You gonna have I now know I, you're supposed to do that. Well, I will share this. Now I do have my nationality documents on file down at the registrar's office as well, and my um and my um 
uh, recension of power of attorney, RPOA. I have that on file there. I I have my... um, um, I have my 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 uh, nationality paperwork on file. It's been on file for about ten years there. All right. Have you filed your UCC one? Some people no, say I have not. Have Some people say you don't have to do it. But see, when I get that far, I'm going back to Jonah to get more okay. clarification on which way to go. And so I don't want to stretch out and give you information that's going to turn you around and get you, you know, kind of messed up. So you do yes, it. You do it. I'm, all I'm going to tell you is you got to get that DBA squared away. Okay. Some, you can almost do the DBA without going downtown, but you got to get it out. Since your name is already Yusuf in the system, that's a straw man. That Yusuf sub is a straw man. And you want to get out of that. I know that for a fact. So yes. you're going to have to, you know, I, I would, like I did, Ron March. I went down and changed it to Ron March L. Bay, okay? Mm-hmm. And, they, and I got that on record, so I'm away from the other. And I got an EIN number for Ron March L. Bay. So when I do put all that in with the 98, I'm going to be real, I hope to be real airtight on all of my protection because everything will be in my foreign trust. Okay. That's where I'm going so I probably it. need to go ahead and call and get a nine eight on that uh on that sub on the L on the L. Yes. Yes. A DBA, get your DBA on that from use of sub to use of sub L. You gotta do that. And it okay. would hurt you, I'll suggest since you are so far ahead and you got so much stuff. I would write down what you really want to do, and I would call Jonah or go on Jonah's website and pay for a consultation. That makes them come to you. A lot of okay. people I tell them to call Jonah, they say, well, he don't call back. Well, I understand. So, but if you mm-hmm. send me money, he's got to call back because you're going to pay for the consultation. Somebody's going to call you and set up a time. And you want to have all your ducks in a row so you can utilize that time. When you ask Correct. him these questions to get, you know, to get squared away. Because he says so many people call him, they talk so damn much that by the time he gets ready to answer, the time is gone. Now, they may have right. time <laughs> You just spend your mouth while I have saying the same shit over and over and over. You know how people do? Just saying all yeah. the same old crap. So I would well, suggest you write down what you've been asking me. So when you get to Jonah, bam, write it down. Bam, write it down. Bam, write thank it down. you, Jonah. Yeah. And so with. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Um, the right. last thing is, with two things, I want to try to contact you to try to uh, talk with you to bring you uh, to this area. Um, what area? Uh, in, in Carolina? North, <laughs> North Carolina, in, near Greensboro. I'm an hour away from Charlotte, 30 minutes from Greensboro. I know where you are. i got people in a fit field. I yeah, my, my Yep. I yeah, go that's through beautiful. Yep, yep. Uh, that's yeah, good. That's, that's, but you can email, email me. Give me, give me some uh, particulars, and I'll and I'll communicate with you. We'll set up some. All right, and that's at the that's at the Yahoo dot com, correct? Yes, sir. Ryan March Show at Yahoo dot com. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna ask this question, then I, I you can mute me off to to kind of answer it. Um, but and again, I appreciate your time because I'm dealing right. with the banks right now, and I, I would like to thank you personally for your program because of what I've heard, brother. When I first heard you and Jonah Bay about the nine eight number, I've been on ever since. <laughs> and um, right. I mean, to pull up the the, the National Currency Act of 1864. And yeah, to read that and to go into some of the other things. And the, the bank's attorneys now constantly coming at me trying to say, well, you're not a lawyer. You're not a lawyer because I'm my mother's power of attorney. And they're trying to say she did. They tried to coerce her into a loan modification because she put the house in the, in, in the trust. So we, we get ready to go back to court, and I'm going to ask them to make sure they put up their delegation of authority. Yes, but there's yes. there's some other things I wanted to ask you know to kind of go along with that because they're constantly saying well you can't represent her but we like well 
you know, when they found, they tried to give her a loan modification, they they called and said, you know your mother has a house in the trust? I said, well, she better have a trial date because they have, were well, illegally foreclosed on it. But now they, they can't do anything. Yep, yep. They can't do it because it's in the trust. You're right. Right. It's in You're the right. trust. So now they, they're trying to uh, do a pleading in bar to try to discredit my mother. To try to say she didn't have any standing because she had given away her right to the trust. Oh, Lordy. How old is your mother? She's 80 years old, brother, and I have her listening to you because because of your age. I think you said you, you're around 74? 74, yes, sir. Yes sir. yes, sir. And I called. I said, "Mother, listen to him. She gonna sound like." I said, "He gonna sound like your cousin." <laughs> <laughs> well, listen to me. Don't let. Do not let Mama go downtown by herself. If they never, call for never. her to come, never. And tell her if they get on the porch, take a baseball bat, crack them, get off my porch. Well, I've already and put up. Um, uh, no trespassing signs all around the whole house. And um, they sent somebody out. Uh, oh, I, I sent a letter to the to the um, attorneys letting them know that if they constantly try to contact her, knowing that I'm her power of attorney, then we will consider that a deliberate threat of harassment. Send a let you you got a you've been to court uh, you've been to court is that right? Well, yeah, we what? we got to go back next week. They want to do a pleading right. and bar because they, they have switched right. uh, attorneys. You got a case number. That's what I wanted to know. You do have a case number. Yes, sir. Right. You can send to, to the clerk. You can write a no a affidavit or a notice of of uh, no trespassing. You can do all of that. Put that case number on that and send send four copies or three copies. Send three copies to the court. Or you should take them down there to the court. Now, I'll take them job, down there. All right. They're going to stamp them, time stamp them. That's number one. So they're going to give one to you, one to the lawyers, one to the judge, and one for the court. Now, you got on record for them to notify you if they want to talk to your mama because you are the uh, legal guardian over mama. And that means stay away from mama. And you got it on, you got it on, on record. You follow me? You can send yes, them sir. a letter. You can get around all that. Just send it to court and put that put that case number on that. And they all the will get a number, copy of it. The case number with, with a, a notice of no trespassing and, and for them, anybody to get in, anybody want to do anything that they have to contact me. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And give Pretty them a, exhibit A. Exhibit A can be a copy of your uh, power of attorney with her. Yeah, the, the judge tried to discredit me last time. He said, brother, your mother's not incapacitated. And uh, so he looked at her and was like, well, Miss Suggs, can you speak? And all she did was just point to me. And I was like, well, first I was like, well, through the power of appointment act, she can appoint who she want to uh, appoint. You're, you're right. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, uh, if she doesn't have the proper education to deal with Tim Crooks, she can have a representative. I want you to look up, ooh, Friend, they call it friend. Oh man, email me, brother. I'll send it to you. It's called. I'm gonna email you as soon as soon as you soon as we finish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna email you. Because I'm gonna send you the law that says friend of fact, fact friend of fact. You have a right to represent anybody that you want. They did it during the civil rights era. Because all those people down there, down south with Martin Luther King, they were not competent enough to fight them rednecks, and they didn't want to be in trouble. By fighting, so they used this law, and and this Shuttleworth was the case that they used because he was the one that that did it. Remember, Reverend Shuttleworth was one of the one of the preachers that was raising hell down there, and the case is called Shuttleworth and something. Anyway, you can be a lawyer for that. You damn that judge. They trying to really rape y'all, man. Oh, brother, let me tell you something. This is what started my passion back in '05 when the attorney had me to do. And this, and I would take the, the ignorance because that's where I was at that time. Had me to do a bankruptcy and a foreclosure. And I'm letting them know that the other day, one of them I saw and I asked him to give me his card because I know the statute of limitations on fraud is none. 
Right. He didn't know why I was smiling at him because I'm coming back at him because I have all the paperwork and he was dealing with MERS and everything. Yes, yes. Now, listen, you may not know it. I'm going to tell it to you. You can use your mama's address and your address as temples in your trust. And, it, and, and it, it becomes no trespasses from the temple. It's like, mm. an embassy. it's like an embassy. Nobody can come on that property because it's part of the trust. That's how you do it. You got to you you teach when you go to see mama. You you educate. That's it. <laughs> I'm getting nervous. The Department of Education. You are the minister of education because you're the trust, one of the trust, and you teach over the mama's house because you go over there and talk to her and keep her informed on the house. And your mm. house is a temple where you live, where you have people come over and you teach them what, you know, guess, so that becomes a temple. Mm. Yes. And it's called, uh, you know, like a, it's like the embassy. Mm-hmm. They can't take it, they can't do nothing with it. So wow. What, what, address, what address did you use when you filed, when you, uh, filed for your uh, no, uh, 98 EIN? My P.O. box. Well, when I filed for my irrevocable trust, I used my home address, which made it my embassy. Oh, wow. Didn't know that. Yeah. Maybe wow. you should go and get, get, they got a book that you can go to Barnes and Noble, wherever down there, and it's called Wills and Estate for Dummies. And it's a yellow, I mean, that's the name of it. It's a yellow, you know, one of the yellow paperbacks. And it yes. gives you a lot of information. It gives you a lot of information on how you know how to how to work a, a state. But you want to write all that down when you get that consultation with Jonah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So and, what, we, what and, I was and, thinking and Ron he Ron, he won't be lying yeah. because he comes over to his mother, and they turn to Ron March on, and they are studying. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, 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 education, temple of education, yes. And that becomes that part education. of your state. Yep. Yep. Now, they got rules and ways. Now, I don't know. See, I'm not that familiar with foreign trust, but that irrevocable trust has rules how you do that and all of that. So you need to okay. get that down on paper when you talk to Jonah. And he, he may have some more ideas because all it is is creative thought. You know, there's no one way of doing nothing. You can do it any way you want as long as you know what you're doing. Like I said earlier yeah. in the show, the last one standing is going to win. That's why they and, still and ask bro- you. And, brother, that you, you, you're making a very good point. And, and I'm telling you, procedure, learning procedure, and doing some of the things that you say, and I'm just saying this to people out there because I've been in the ignorance. I've paid people to give me what I thought was procedure, but they didn't really know it. You know, I've been through the ups and the downs, and and through it, just trying to move on faith. You know, I've been able to back them up enough to get stronger as I'm as I'm continuing my strive and learning this knowledge. That's what they call that's why. Paying your dues, yeah. brother. That's what you call paying yeah. your dues. <laughs> so, and I'm going to get off the phone, brother, and I appreciate you, and I'm going to email you. Um, but yeah. When I go to court for my mother, um, I was just thinking about faxing something over because I, I tell you, these new attorneys, man, they're something. And oh, you know, yeah, they, they yeah. just come straight in. And I said, well, since y'all are getting real smart and, and you don't want to try to make me not be my mother's power of attorney, I'm going to send them a uh, uh, something over tomorrow by fax about that delegation of authority. Like, don't even come into the room until they show it. And I'm going to send it over to the clerk. Yep, yep, yep. I got another piece I'm going to send you uh, that the lawyers are not allowed to be in court anyway because they're foreign entities. Lawyers I was listening to that this morning. Yes, they got their P number. They, 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 their oath is given to the Queen of England. They're no, traitors. Let me yes, share. Let me tell you how serious this is. You're right, because when I when I pulled the, the the lawyers was trying to get my mother to discredit me as her power of attorney, because yes. I kept asking them questions, 
And when I told them to their face, I said, you all are working in collusion with the bank. The dad attorney stood up and said, get out my office. Get out my office. <laughs> I said, no, I said, I said, run your mouth right now like you've been running, talking to his son. I said, because I, I got you down for harassment, harassment and this is with, which deals with ethics, because you're talking to an 80-year-old woman like she's a teenager. I said, who yeah. do you think you're talking to? So when I sent in information on the bar, um, the bar comes back because they, he, he wanted to withdraw from the case. And the bar said, yeah. well, we can't change a judge's. A rule. I'm like, well, we didn't send you in to change a judge's rule. We got it up on ethics and a breach of, of duty of the contract because you can't tell her that they did a fake foreclosure and, and we're going to get you money, and then y'all flip, and now you're trying to get into a loan modification. So come to find yeah. out last December they had, had filed a – a final consent order, and when I and I had my sisters and everything talking against me, and when I researched mm-hmm. and said, "Well, Mama, did you know they, the, the attorney's already uh, signed a consent order a final?" She said, "No." So that blew the whole thing right there. And then when they found out that it was on record that the house was in the trust, the lawyer said, "I wish y'all would have told me this from the beginning." I said, "Well, yep. I came to your daddy back in July." That's a lie. He said, that's a lie. I said, well, we can put it in an affidavit. You can tell us under the pen is a perjury. Yeah. So these well, are straight crooks, them. man. I mean, these are straight crooks. Yeah. Well, you can nail now, what them. I... Drop... You can nail I'm sorry, them go ahead. I'm just going to Jake, You can nail him by dropping affidavits on his ass. He got to answer them. And you can, you can charge him with anything you want. And then once... Once he refused to answer, now you can have him disbarred. Now okay. we don't want you off the case. We're going to disbar you. We're going to take that P number away because you're far Well, the, the anyway. judge, the, the judge took him off, and when wow. he took him off, the lawyers for the bank was in there with him. And I was like, "What are you doing here? This has nothing to do with you." So that's now, why I'm sending up declaration of authority. But what we have done since then had a uh, securitization audit done. Whoa. Call me, brother. Email me. I got some good stuff. Email me. I'm going to eat in two minutes. When do we get off, I'm going to email you because the secu- right. that securitization is powerful because it can't just, the first and thing it said is the first fraud, fraud they found was that the note was separate from the deed. They took two separate yes. paths. Yes, yes, yes. And the note has been destroyed. You read in the audit, it'll tell you the note was destroyed in New York. The law says mm. it must be destroyed in order to securitize. That's why securitizing is illegal. Mm. Securitization is illegal because they're supposed to destroy the note. And they got people keep paying it because they think the note is alive and the note's not there. I'm just talking about that. Yes. They destroy the yes. note. The law says you must destroy the note. You can't double dip. You can't you double can't dip. Double, and I, you can't double I just dip. want to and say for those do. out there that everything you're saying, brother, and for those who do not believe, because like I said, I have, have continued to go through some of the ups and downs, and I will yes. say and, and praise the Most High that you have helped to fill some gaps, and I appreciate that you're constantly telling people to read. They have read. to read. They yes. have to read. But I'm going to okay. email you, brother, because I want to get you down in this area. All right. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, get, it. I'll get back with you tomorrow, no later, Friday. All right? Oh. Yes, sir. I'll get back with you. All right? All right. Thank Good you. And peace to you. All right. Peace and love to you. Yep. Okay. Uh, ben, are you there? Yes. Yes, I am. I got, I got, a, I got this caller came back. Uh, nine one two one six nine five. Are you there? Yes. Go ahead, call. Can you hear me? Yes, hey, I I'd like you to continue talking about the validation. And uh, like I said, uh, that uh, you guys are doing a great job. But uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to get away from that stereo that I have. Because it's, it's getting yeah. too much of a feedback here. That's what you. But I was saying to you, 
Yeah. So I'm just going. My house is uh, two. I don't know what's All going on right, here. Let, let, let Wait a me minute. get back. Oh. In fact, the time is running out. You got a, you got a question? Yeah, I know. And I just want to say hello to Beverly. And I just want to say this to you. Hello. And let you do what you got to do. Uh, Beverly, you're a lot smarter than, than, than you might come off. Did I, I heard you with uh, the, the, with, uh the, the prophet X Man, whatever his name is. But I was listening to Robert you the other day. Robert X. Robert, yeah, and Robert X. yeah, I'm on to you now. I see what's really going on. And I'm gonna say this too to Ron. When you were talking about Donald Trump, I really believe yeah. he's just been he's a sacrificial lamb and he works with Obama now. Because yeah. there's no way in the world them guys could do what they're doing. And then he signs the executive order. <laughs> To continue the the process, so hey, yeah. let's throw you out there, but yet it's still you got to believe your heart. They flip and flop, and uh, talk a little bit more about the signature because it's like he was saying about uh, you guys talk about trust, or trying to keep stuff, and that's that's easy to do. If your signature creates money, and if you got the income verified, there's nothing that you you should never be stopped. If you if yeah, I buy a house today, you want to take it? Come and get it. I'll buy another one bigger uh-huh. next week. Based upon the information well, that you've given us. Yeah, that's true. But all of us can't. we got to be creative, brother. A lot of us don't know how, and a lot of us don't make that kind of money that we can stand for them to keep taking from us that we've worked so hard in life to give. You know, a lot of people are on Social Security. A lot of people are on, on uh, retirement programs. Now, if you set up a retirement program 30 years ago and everything worked and you got out of it and you've already got out of the plant, you're in your retirement years and now they're going to change the rules where your retirement money is not going to let you live the way you were supposed to live, you've got a major problem because you can't go back to work. You see what I'm saying? That's true. So That's true. You, I, but these are the people I try to get to that you got to study because they don't have a right to do what they're doing, but you got to know how to stop them. And I don't know everything. I just, I know I'm going to fight. I know I'm going to fight. Whatever they do to me, I'm fighting. Whatever they say is right, I'm going to say it's wrong. Whatever they say is wrong, I'm going to say it's right. Because i got to learn I like so I can stay on top of the game. You dig it? I, so that's where I'm yeah, at. Yeah, I dig it. I, I, like, I like the way All you right. fight. Just like I told I told my uncle today, he's about 70 years old. And I told him I said, he just like this. When you move, I move. Yeah, you go. I move. There you go. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. All right, brother. But, but 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 I just want to say this to you again, Ron. When you fill out the application, yep. when you fill out the application, and let's say they deny you, but they still got the application with your signature on it. That thing is still good. Yeah. Yes, How did, what did you put on there to stop them from from shopping that thing around? Reserve. I reserve my rights. You can go look up UCC, UCC 1-207 or UCC 1-308. Put that under your signature that you are reserving your rights. They cannot catch it. It becomes defunct. It can only be used for what you want it to be used for, and it says for an application. And you were denied, so they can't do it. So you got to remember, okay. anytime you sign your name, reserve your rights. You got it? Outstanding, man. Yes. Yep. All right. I understand. All right, man, we're at the bottom of the aisle. They're getting ready to cut us off. Mm-hmm. Yep. All hey, right. What we gonna have, all right. What we're going to have to do, man, is do a part two next week. Okay. Is it all right with you? Yeah. Okay. I got my dog wearing a sock. I got a Wednesday at 6.30. Next Wednesday at 6.30, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Peace and love. Peace and love, man. And, and yeah, peace and love show. to the family. Yes. Peace and love to the family. All right. Talk to you. Oh, uh, ben, we, ben, you still there? Yes, I am. We got to meet this weekend. Yes. We're going to meet this weekend. 
I'll call okay, you. I'll call you. you. I'll call you. 